diary it's the middle of January 2020 um, and this is a video to show you how to change the firmware in the Sonoff RF433 bridge to Tasmota. Um, the Sonoff comes with an application called EWE Link and it allows you to connect your 433 MHz sensors to this device which has been disassembled in front of you um, <clears throat> and using EWE Link you can receive notifications. For example, if you have a door sensor and you open and close the door, you'll get a, a, a notification if the door sensor has been triggered. So what we'd rather do is have our own custom firmware called Tasmota, um, and this video shows you how. Now, um, it's all set up ready to go. Um, I'll just tell you briefly that you need to disassemble the box, which is here. Uh, there are just four screws on the back. You need, you need to take off the rubber feet and behind the rubber feet are four tiny little hex, um, sorry, Phillips screws, you need to undo them. In front of you I've got the actual pin connections that I'm going to use to connect to this converter here. So it's 3 volts, receive, transmit, ground. So you need four pins to connect your programmer, which you're converting from serial through these pins, uh, to this device. Now what I would suggest, I say it's all ready to go, is that you do the following things. I've got a flashing directory which was made from the ESP Easy Easy.flasher.exe. And when I downloaded that tool, it created these directories when I tried to flash something. Now this comes up with a GUI, but I looked in the log and you don't need to use the GUI at all, you can just use the command itself. So in the uh, app data directory there was a, a program, a command line program called esptool.exe. So I've taken that and I've put it in the top level directory I called flashing. So it's here. And in the bin file directory I've downloaded the latest tasmota.bin file. Now Tasmota's gone through many iterations and I now notice today it's on version 8. And when I left it it was at version 6 so there's been some dramatic differences. Um, so what I did is I went to the official Tasmota site, so the um, uh, Tasmota site, which is on GitHub, uh, there'll be links in the blog, related blog article, and downloaded tasmota.bin into this directory. So we have all the files together now. Um, what we need to do is to actually make a command line, which is going to work. Now you see in front of you the command line, which is an esptool.exe program, uh, changing the baud rate to 50, 115200 and going across COM14. Now COM14 is the communications port that I've got on my laptop but may not be what you will get when you plug in uh, your your converter card, uh, your programming card. So how would you find out what COM port you're in? Well before wiring everything up you can just plug your card in and as you can see mine comes up with USB COM port 14. So I know that it's COM port 14 when that device is plugged in. So I've adjusted my command line here to read COM 14. I've got touch screen, so I'll try not to touch the screen. So yeah, here we've got COM 14. So that's the command line that needs to be run. So what you need to do is you need to look at these pin connections here. 3 volt, because it's a 3 volt flash. Receive, transmit, and ground. You can get connect four wires from the associated electronics card here into there. You, you're then going to hold this reset button here and plug in the device. And by the way, before you do any of this, I forgot to mention you need to, to change the slider. Well, once we've programmed the device, let's look at the slider. So you'll have un, you've, you've taken the device out of the box. You've changed the slider. You then got this wiring set up, you've got your command line ready, you're going to hold the button on the side of this device as you plug this in. So that, get, that gets the, um, the bridge into programming mode. Without that it's not going to work. So as if by magic I'm just going to bring up that last command line here and we're going to reflash the device. Let's go. Uh -huh. So what's happening now is it's retrying to flash the device 
and it's failing. So that's what happens when you've lost connectivity from here to here. So what we're going to do is, is uh, not scheduled, let's on the fly recover. So we're going to unplug it and make sure my blue tack which is holding down these bits of wires is still good. We're going to hold down the button and we're going to try and find up this point here, plug it in, let go of the button, try again. Right, so you see it's receiving some data here. At this point you know it's made a good connection. You see it says a raising flash and now these little dots that are rushing across the screen shows that it's programming. So it's working. I'm still here, we're going to wait till the end of the flash. Really here. Okay, it's finished successfully and now what's going to happen is this is going to reboot itself and when it reboots itself it always comes up on 192.168.4.1 that's the initial IP address it comes up with but it's also going to come up with its own Wi-Fi bubble and you're going to connect to that bubble to configure the, to, to, to configure the device.